My name is Nuri Turkel. I'm an attorney and human rights advocate in Washington, D.C. I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers of this conference for the opportunity to shine a light on the abominable crimes that the Chinese Communist Party is committing against my people in East Turkestan, that Mao's China renamed as the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region after its occupation in 1949. China's ghastly human rights abuses are happening as we speak. China's Communist Party has a long history of persecuting Uyghurs, and the ongoing crisis did not happen overnight. The full-scale military-style control started in about 2009 in the name of combating extremism. Since the second half of 2016, China's repression of the Uyghurs has intensified. Xinjiang Communist Party Secretary Chen Chuanguo has installed grid-style policing consisting of ubiquitous police checkpoints and pervasive surveillance. The authorities ramped up technology-enabled controls like surveillance cameras, mandatory DNA collection, and iris scans, and compulsory monitoring apps on every phone. Since early 2017, Chen Chuanguo has orchestrated the detention of as many as 3 million Uyghurs in the modern day concentration camps that he has designed to teach like a school, be managed like the military, and defended like a prison. And in his own words, the purpose of these camps is to break Uyghur lineage, break their roots, break their connections, and break their origins. The persecution goes far beyond the camps. Uyghur children are forcibly separated from their parents and sent to the state-run orphanages. Uyghur religious heritage is being completely eradicated with religious attire being banned and religious institutions destroyed. Uyghur activists and policy experts have been started to use the term cultural genocide when describing China's forced elimination of Uyghur identity. Despite what China says, the journalists, the academics, advocates who have been exposing these abuses have not made this story up out of a thin air. In fact, they have been using evidence the Chinese government itself left behind that includes satellite imagery, construction tenders, photographs from government websites, and social media postings, and more. Several high-profile document leaks in the final month of 2019 proved this even further by showing the following. First, evidence of China's intent to back up what Uyghurs have been telling the world for more than two years. Second, the orders come from the very top. In one leaked speech, China's Communist Party General Secretary Xi Jinping gives orders to show, quote-unquote, absolutely no mercy. Third, party insiders took a tremendous risk in leaking these documents, and whistleblowers have been punished with jail time. Fourth, the authorities methodically tried to hide what it was doing. It wrote an entire script to ensure that students knew missing family members would face even worse torture, misery, if they were to complain. Fifth and finally, China itself sees these camps as a concentration camps. The documents do use the word Ji Zhong, meaning concentration, which shows that the Communist Party intended to round up individuals for collective punishment, transformation, solely because of their race, ethnicity, and religion. This is all deeply personal for me. About 12 years ago, the Chinese authorities revoked my parents' passports when one of my brothers was planning to marry a high-profile Uyghur dissident, Rabia Qadr's daughter, in the United States. My parents have only ever seen three of their eight grandchildren. I haven't seen my mother in the last 16 years and my father for about six years. But I was able to keep in touch with them until the summer 2018. Even though we knew we were being monitored, our ability to video chat and exchange photographs across borders 
help us to feel a sense of normalcy and connection. But today, we don't have that right, and our lives are not normal. Every day, I wonder what my parents are doing, how their health is, whether there's anyone taking care of them. I wish I could talk to them. And also that my own son could have a chance to know their grandparents. I worry that my ailing parents may not leave this world in dignity and heartbreakingly that I may not even know when they pass. But there's another element to this story that should worry all of you. And that is China's model for digital authoritarianism, which it has been perfecting in the Uyghur region to export to the rest of China and the world. What is happening in my homeland is not being confined there. China's tools of monitoring and surveillance are spreading across the globe, making it readily available for authoritarian governments to suppress populations that they find bothersome. Today, at least 18 countries around the world, including Malaysia, Singapore, Zimbabwe, Angola, Venezuela, and the UAE have already adopted China's surveillance techniques to monitor and repress their own citizens. The Uyghur crisis is a global problem, one that all of us attending this conference must solve alongside world leaders, global advocates for human rights and democracy. So what can you do to help? I will close by sharing just a few ideas on the governmental, multilateral, and individual levels. Governments throughout the Europe should consider doing the following. One, to adopt global Magnitsky sanctions to target actors who are involved or complicit in what likely constitute crimes against humanity and to adopt export control on tainted products, specifically those in which any part of supply and labor chains are connected to textile and cotton from the Uyghur region. And three, adopt parliamentary mandates similar to the United States Congress's Uyghur Policy Act. On the level of multilateral organizations, we should be working towards one, ensuring that the UN Human Rights Council convenes an emergency session. Two, gaining United Nations, World Health Organization, and other international institutions to get access to the Uyghur region for investigation. And three, pressuring institutions such as the World Bank to immediately cease their controversial lending to the Xinjiang government. But I'm sure some of you want to know what can you do as individuals? And here's what I recommend. One, demand that your MPs and other political, religious, civic leaders speak about these issues. And two, write letters. For example, you can urge the Red Cross to take action to trace missing Uyghur family members. And also urge the International Olympic Committee to reconsider holding the 20 22 Winter Olympics in China. And three, use social media to share important news with your friends and family, as well as to join one of the many Uyghur-led campaigns online. Four, donate your time and money to Uyghur-run organizations. In closing, I'd like to point out that this is not about the Uyghurs anymore or this is not about how communist China treats its own citizens. This is about us as a free people and a civilization. Whatever you choose to do, however you decide to respond, the time to act is now. No one can say they did not know because they do know now. Thank you. <laughs>